Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Drinks, Jokes, and Storytelling. I'm your host, Mark Riccadonna, and with me as always... Richie Byrne. Richie, we got a great episode today. Yes, we do. uh, I'm very excited for this one because we're we're good friends with him. He's a writer, he's a director, he's a filmmaker, and if you look at his background, you'll know what company he works for and owns, 624 Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Weldinger. (laughs) And he's a graduate of my college. And yeah, a graduate yeah. Wagner College. Yeah, baby. Yes. Thanks, about guys. That? Thanks. Thanks for having me on. It's great. So Tom and I have a really awesome uh, kind of thing. We have like three, four projects. Yeah. That we're, so I'm mm-hmm. in constant contact with them. And Richie, you got to come on with the one. And we yes. Had so much fun. Can we and talk I- about that for a minute? I've had more people talk about the Facebook posts that you guys did. And I don't think that they realize that there's more to it than that. And I don't know how to make them understand that they, they're they like, well, that was really cute. And I'm like, did you watch the whole thing? They're like, yeah, they're like the clip on thir- the 30 second. I'm like, no, dude, you got to hit on the. <laughs> but I, it's hard for me to get mad because I would be that guy. So like, <laughs> I'm the guy. <laughs> It's you know, like a lot is, of work, but not a lot of time. There's, there's a, there's a, I think there's a, there's a common thing that's kind of going on right now in the industry. And Mark, you and I have talked about this, and I've been talking to a lot of different people in the industry. Getting people to go from one social media app to another social media app is almost impossible. Yeah. Um. And so, Richie, one of the things that we're going to actually going to be doing is all of those episodes, right? The first eight episodes of season one, we just had the series finale last week. Those are all on our YouTube channel, but people are not going over to the 624 channel. They're watching on Facebook. They're watching the trailers on Instagram. And we're getting like, we got over 150,000 views on two of our reels last week on Instagram. Wow. But really? Those, no joke. And I'm not exaggerating at all. You can look it up. But to get those people. Because I don't believe in, you. No, I, I, I'll I, take a picture. I'm I'll send kidding. It to you. I'm kidding. Hey, puppy. Um, <laughs> so I love the dog. The dog's like, what's going hey, on? Look, I'm believe you. Mark's got his own Tony Walker. <laughs> the dog's like, I don't, I don't, dog's like, I don't believe this shit. Does Tony um, shit on your floor and make you clean it up? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes eat it. Um, no, I do. I make him do it. <laughs> so, so what we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna re-release all of those episodes straight to Instagram and and hopefully and and collaborate. You know, send invitation collaborations to those people who got us all those views. Okay. Because for, because for some friggin' reason, can I, can I curse on here? I don't know if I'm allowed. Yes. Yeah, of course. I've cursed so, four so, times, so, Tom, since you've been on. Fucking some fucking stupid reason. People do not click from one to yeah. the next. But do you know how. Put, ridiculous people are and this is my frustration because I, I, we talk about it at length throughout the the whatever episode we're on here at drinks jokes and storytelling i hate social media i hate it me too and one of the main reasons i hate it is, is this is this it's the yeah. okay hey we spent a lot of time a lot of effort and money to create something really cool can you just click on it and see if you like it Right. You can't get on the click over. It's, there's not. It doesn't cost you anything. It's not going to hurt you in any way. The We're not trying to it. sell you anything. And so you do that, and you go. People won't click over. But then after shows, I go to hand cards to people, business cards, and go follow me on Instagram. We I put up <laughs> stuff every day. Every day I put up two reels. Follow yes. me on Instagram. Can't get people to do it. They go, ah, I got to go on Instagram. Then I got to look up your name. I got to do whatever. I get a QR code business card. There's the QR code. You just have to take your camera out, put it up to it, and you go right to my Instagram page, and you hit follow. People go, I don't I don't know. I have to take out my camera app. I have, it, is, like, it is a lot of work, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just doing this is a lot. It's a lot. You know what it, I mean? It's, it's you know. <laughs> I'm asking people to move mountains to try to follow. Me. It's crazy. It's crazy. But you know what though? It's um, you know the un, you know the unfortunate uh, news we got the other day was Carl Weathers passed away, right? Yes. Um, which Very. really really sucked. But I've been and and on social media, it's like all these Carl Weather interviews that he's done with people. I was watching one last night, and he talks about you know being a movie star and being an actor, right? And he's like, if you want to be a movie star, it's like Eddie Van Halen said it about, you know, you want to be a rock star, you want to be a movie star, 
you're in the wrong business. But if you want to be an actor, you want to be a working actor, you want to be a working musician, you got to grind, you got to grind, you got to grind. And that's unfortunately, you know, that's what we have to do. We got to keep grinding until, you know, yeah. until, you know, we're up at the Grammys getting our fourth Grammy like Taylor Swift, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. No, true. But, and that's why the three of us are on this podcast and we're going to, yeah. I mean, the, the one, the great, we're comp the great thing about this what, where where we live now, uh, and this is from somebody who's been around for a long time, is that we do now have the ability to do this at least. Where, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, I mean, it may be a pain in the ass to get people to click on it, but at least we can do it now. You have the equipment, Tom, that you couldn't have had 25, 30 years ago, even 15 Agreed. years ago. Uh, we didn't have the social media, media presence to say, Hey, come look at this and hope that pe you know what I mean. It, it, yeah. it, we were totally in uh, in hands of people who no, could I mean, care less. So I mean, I guess from 10, that, fifteen end, years ago, you so had to you had to rely on you had to rely just on film festivals for independence, yes. right? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So it's 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 a great it's a crazy time, there's, you know. Yeah, there's I mean, a lot of there's a lot of good, but I mean, it's also oh, yeah. like. We're taking away instead of worrying about writing and instead of worrying about acting, I have to go on and make clips to put online. And it's like, are we right. lowering the bar? Are we lowering the bar? Well, unfortunately, we are lowering the bar. And those are the guys that are selling out the comedy clubs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Well, I'll tell you, though, Richie, you were. On set, you were awesome. Your your episodes one of the, one of the one of the one of the popular ones that got real. Oh, really? Great. No, yeah, for sure. The real, the real crushed it. it the real, I think, got up to ten thousand views on it. Um, okay, just for you. your, just for your real on the on the folk festival. Um, folk festival. But and it's funny. I was I was just driving up to Staten Island to visit my uncle um, with my dad, and he goes to me. He goes, "Did he say? Did he say fuck or folk?" I was like, and I looked at him. I'm like, I don't know. What did you think he said? He goes, oh, wow. I don't know. I'm like, well, then watch it again and see what see what you hear. <laughs> oh, that's really I cool. Can you figure it out. <laughs> that's really cool thank you tom that's awesome i really no, enjoy and, and we're gonna do a well mark can i say can i say yeah. or let's so, go for it man. so we're we're gonna we're, we're moving into we're gonna be doing a season two of yes Check Out. so um, and you know on law and order they bring actors back to play other parts tom I, i'm just throwing it out there well, I if and I'm Dick, throwing. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have brought it up if if we. Didn't if Dick Wolf can do it, you can back. certainly fucking do it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just Thomas saying, may, maybe a governor's comedy club. Maybe a third guy working behind the counter wouldn't be bad either. <laughs> throwing it <laughs> out. Gonna there. Have, we're gonna have 15 comedians all working behind the counter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> just become <laughs> how many employees are at this little grocery store? Actually, Tom, let's talk because people watching this might not even know what we're talking about. Yeah, that's true. Tell us I know about I checked know. out. So checked out is a it's a mini web series. Uh right now it's living on the 624 Productions YouTube channel. We're going to be re-releasing it as full episodes. Each episode's about four to five minutes long yes. uh, on Instagram, on our Instagram channel as well. That's going to be coming out in the next week or two. two. It is about two guys uh, who work in a bodega in New York City. Uh, one is, I guess you can consider him woke, very sensitive to, to words and languages and the environment and the world. And then you have the other character who is completely Mel Brooks, anti-woke, doesn't care, says what he wants to say. Uh, lives lives life freely um and then you have the uncle and that's mark is mark you rickadonna you star in you are you are our anti-woke gentleman and you just tell it like it is right which and is amazing i love about our characters are they're they're three-dimensional because our woke character got wrongly me too yes so he he does have issues toward that he's not all a hundred percent super woke like yeah. he wrongly got me too, and my character, who's we're calling him the anti woke guy, I don't even think he's anti woke. I think he's just happy to be there. True. Like, True. I'm just happy to be here, and I'm trying to have a laugh at my well, job. Then you hired the the right actor because no one ever looks more happy to be where they are than Mark Rickadonna. No matter what, <laughs> it's the, no matter where you are, he always looks happy to be there. Even if he isn't, he looks it. 
<laughs> and the 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 other the other co star <laughs> is uh, is Michael Satow. Um, and it's it's about these two guys, how they deal with different characters coming into the story. Each episode, like I said, is anywhere between three and five minutes long. It's how they interact with these different characters. Richie, you you play a character that comes in who's from Scotland, who's got a very heavy Scottish brogue. Yes. Uh, Scottish, Scottish accent, I should say. Um, and it's the difficulty of like, what is he saying? Like, what's he talking about? And it's the, the comedy of that. And there's multiple. We have Ernie O'Donnell who comes in. Chris Roach is on it. Um, uh, who played Ernie O'Donnell's yeah. wife? I forget. Uh, Patty Rothborough. Patty Rothborough. Patty which Rothborough. I want to thank you guys because Patty and I have a very hard relationship. We we love to give each other shit as much as possible. It's our thing. And, just, and anybody watching, go back and watch the Patty Rossborough episode and just know that Richie and Patty actually like each other. We we but she the last comic I needed to be there when I'm standing there in a kilt was Patty Rossborough. So wait, did we she, she shot we right film, before me? I was like, did we film because I know we filmed three episodes a night. It was um, me. It was her episode, mine, and Roach's. And Chris oh, Roach. The it was the same night. That's right. Yeah. That's it yeah. was like a, a 2005 reunion, stand-up oh, comedy reunion. <laughs> at the but it was just, Patty just, she was so overwhelmed by how I looked that she almost couldn't get a joke out because there were so many running through her head at overload. the same time. The, the put-downs that were coming were just she immense. overload. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was, you know, you guys did great. It was it was a lot of fun working with all of you guys. And that's and I'll be honest with you, um, you know, Ernie, um, who was on the show, he he called me about a, a couple of days ago and he told me he's like, Tom, he goes, that was so much fun. He goes a lot of he goes, it was a lot of fun. We worked on a lot of different independent production. And I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm just saying all of us, like the whole crew, all of you guys, everybody just came prepared. Everybody came to work. Um, and it, and that's, and the, and the, and the, and the end result is what you get is you get a good product when you have, well, I'll actors, tell you, Tom, I love you know. the concept that the lead, the lead characters never leave that set. No, so the world comes to them. They don't go to the world. And I, that, that's what I find interesting about it. You know? Well, and, and look, I can't, I, I, Richie, I appreciate what you're saying, but to be honest with you, all I've done is put some of the pieces in in the, together, which is really the production, the creative piece of it, the stories, the themes. They come from Mark, Mike, our executive producer. Those guys are the are the guys who are really like coming up with some of the great ideas and the stories of of keeping them in the shop and everything. Like right. That. I, I can't take credit and be like, oh, that you know that was my like. But honestly, it's a it's a great concept. It it's really an awesome is awesome concept, and I and I love it tremendously because it's such a great collaborative team that we have. Um, that just that puts a good, really cool product and a fun. Product. And I'm not going to give Mark credit because I've known him for years and he's really not done anything for my career. But maybe I have a shot with you, so I'm just going to kiss your ass now. Yeah, well, <laughs> believe me, Richie, the feelings mutual. I do not want to help your career at all, so it, it works out great. That's why we get along so well. Neither of us like your career. All right, so um, wait, hold on. So, Mark, your uh, your background. You got a green background. Do you do you? Put, do you put something back there? Does Tony put something back there, or just you just you're just, no. the, green, you're just in the green wall? No, that's actually his wall in his Hello. house. It's a bad paint I, job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm in the green room. Ah, <laughs> look at that, Rich, where, at Richie. Where where are you guys? Where are you? Guys? We're at Governor's Comedy Club in Long Island, and uh, oh, nice. That's where this comes out of the uh, Gov's uh, radio, so, radio nice. podcast. What would you call it? Gov's radio, right? Podcast. Ghost podcast. Apparently, I got in trouble just now. Oh, and uh, okay. I lived, I, oh, yeah, there it is right there. I live two miles away from here. So it's just easier for me to drive up. And uh, wait, that's it. right. You came from Long Island. How that was a yeah. long fucking trip for you. Yeah, huh? think. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, like, all the Long Island guys, they get booked on something. They're like, that's like a five hour drive to get to yeah. that gig. Like, uh, it, yeah, not if you lived in New York. Well, see? you know, yeah, yeah. You know what was rough about that night, Tom? That I remember, it was raining like crazy. It was. It was and that was the problem. The rain, driving in that rain, was really scary. I remember trying you know, to get out to the tent to the food, and the rain was just coming. Down. People would run. It's like two feet in the yeah. rain. People were running to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I and, and Richie, I know you made the joke about it, but I am always happy wherever I am. Mm -hmm. And like every theater production I've ever been in, I like love, love the cast. I love the crew. I love the theater. I love my character. And when it's over, I get really sad. 
And right. it's every theater production, every scene. And night, you worked with Nardi Ello. Every <laughs> every film I've ever worked on, like at the end, I get really sad. Yeah. I get really sad that it's over. But with Checked Out, there was like, uh, like I almost started crying because I was like, everything from sitting in the makeup chair mm -hmm. to being on set, like, we're running jokes where everybody mm -hmm. came prepared. Everybody knew what they were doing. All the actors came ready. There was never like, we have to worry if somebody's not, does didn't do their homework. And so it was like, it, it wasn't even like doing improv. It was like, we, everybody was just in character. And if they went off and had another joke, like we were like, yeah, go with it. Let's see where this right. goes. Yeah. It was amazing. It's I didn't do that at all, state. which is funny because I saw Roachy after me. Roach was doing that a lot. Yeah. I didn't, and the reason I I didn't was twofold. Number one, I didn't know how far you wanted me to go, and number two, I was so worried about that friggin' accent. Number three, <laughs> all of a sudden, it did, all of a sudden, I'm in a kilt, and I'm worried that it's gonna fall at any moment. I just kept thinking that kilt was gonna come off. And, and number Patty four, Ross goes there with a knife me, and fork going. Yeah, yeah, I got Patty behind me. Then, then you hand me bagpipes and an umbrella. So yeah. I had like, and I'm like, I just, I, I looked like a Bugs Bunny cartoon or something. I had so much crap in my hands. I'm like, I'm just going to keep saying fuck festival, fuck festival. <laughs> so I'm glad so to hear it worked out because I was just like, I have to just stay on point here because I'm going to, if I just felt like everything could, I felt like I was in a game of Jenga. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, what was great about Richie is is we shot that, and within the month, within thirty days of each other, we had him playing an Irish monster. Yeah, yeah. and Before he had a heavy Irish accent. Yeah, I'm like Mark. Can I do one gig for you that I don't have to come up with some stupid accent, please? And, and as you say it in your Long Island accent. <laughs> uh, but it really it, I, I, uh, to the people go go watch this man it's good it's really Check good and, and you're right everybody who worked on it was amazing everybody had so everybody gave a shit yeah you know, there was nobody there that was just there that's what got you me you know what's funny is every time I would watch one of the episodes I would be like oh yeah yeah this is my favorite episode and then the next one would come out and be like, "Oh yeah, 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 wait, this I, this one's my favorite one." Yeah. I never, I, I can't like I love everybody who came in. There was nothing like where I even watching them. There was no moment where I was like, "Oh, they're kind of out of character there." Or everybody came to play, man, and it was yeah. awesome. I love yeah, it. And Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know, I think I think the fact that and Richie, you you brought this up is that the fact that we're that it's the one set, it's the one place that these two main characters, and also by the way, um, you know, you've got Jimmy Palumbo's character who is right. he, he comes in as the uncle in a couple of different episodes because he runs the place, right? Um, but it's I think the fact that it's it's this it's that's that's the set. It's like and and I'm not attributing this this to Saturday Night Live, but it's like Saturday Night Live where people just come and they're like. All right, I feel comfortable. I can just, I can just work, and I can roll with this. Um, yeah. and, uh, that was that was the environment we wanted to build, and and it was built because of everybody's willingness to have fun. Right. I mean, even dude, even the cameramen were fun. Yeah, would, on set. They were. They were great. Yeah. Like yeah. when we're filming, the sound guy was funny. Everybody on set was funny. It was the perfect tone. It was the perfect like vibe. That I feel like all the actors got to totally let loose and yeah. do whatever mm -hmm. they wanted. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. It's uh, it was it was a lot of fun, and and that's and that's why we're going to do a second season because a lot of you know the people you know <clears throat> like I said we've been getting we've been getting people watching it and see people are seeing it and the people who I've been commenting and I'm getting comments on some social media people are like oh this is hilarious this is the type of comedy we need this is the kind of show we need and you know you know, what's, what's the end goal? Is it, is it something where it's going to blow up and, you know, expand out into full episodes? I don't know. I, to me, and Mark, this is something that you, me and Seitao, and actually by one of the other writers, Tom Briscoe came out with some great stories too, as well. Yeah. 
is, you know, do we want to, do we want to expand on this or is this, is this sort of a format where a great, sh you know, you can have a really fun show like this and only, you know, and you can keep a through line with characters and character development and story development and stuff like that. And yet still have that comedy, but you don't have to have it. It doesn't have to be 22 minutes long. It can be like we were doing four to five minutes right. hit, hit yeah. it and move on. There's True. no, I mean, that's, I, so we were bitching earlier about social media and all this stuff, but it's also like, there's no rules anymore. You don't have no. to do a 22 minute show. No. You can do 10 minutes. You can do a five minute. Yeah. There's homes for it. There's a place what do you, for it. What's your guys, what's your guys feeling on TikTok? What do you guys, how, how do you guys feel about TikTok? I, I don't. I, go ahead, Mark. Oh, I, I mean, I feel it's the same way. I like Instagram a little more than TikTok, but like I have a TikTok and I post on it, yeah. but I don't, I don't follow it i don't maintain it i don't watch other people's videos it's like yeah it's like just like uh, something on the checklist i got a new video tiktok reels youtube right. <laughs> is tiktok even giving is there any monetization to tiktok because like oh. i know youtube and like and instagram now is giving some monetization but like i don't think there's any monetization to tiktok i, I think know. there is you is know there? who would know this? Ashley. If she was on today, who, our third wheel yeah. on, the, oh, on the show. She sucks. <laughs> she, um, she's Ashley. in Japan. Ooh, so I'm in Japan with the truth. I feel so bad she's missing an episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah she's I'm, I'm curious, right? Like, isn't, didn't, um, didn't they mention something at the Grammys last night? How how TikTok is is well, everybody's music has been pulled or music videos have been pulled from TikTok because they were they were not paying out to for for any sort of distributions and anything like that. I, I, maybe I've got that story wrong. No, I, you may not. I I don't know any, but I'm not. I don't know much about that stuff. You know, I have to. I have to. I have to Google it. Go oh, Google it. I have to Google that. Yeah, Google. Yeah, Google that shit. Ooh, that shit. So uh, we're talking about checked out, but uh, other projects you have going mm -hmm. on is we have the uh, we, well, you have unsuited, one, unsuited, which was an amazing pilot. You yeah, and, uh, yeah. How's that? What's going on with that? Anything? So we've got uh, we actually got two episodes that we've been screening. We screened it at the World Series of Poker in July of last year at their main event, um, and then we just screened it again at the World Poker Tour down in uh, Seminole, Florida. Um, and Poker News, which is the the major uh, media outlet for the poker community, was uh, was there at the at the um, at the screening, and they wrote a great article, a great review on the show, and uh, it's going well. We're we're in talks with the, the the WPT right now, and trying to get things moving ahead. Um, okay, we've got we've gotten some interest from some distribution channels and services that are interested in wanting us to to make more episodes, but. You guys know the name of the game. You know, uh, it comes down to financing. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, in, and I've been told that in this environment, we should go out and make our full season and then come back to the to the networks and say, hey, here's a full season. You're looking for content. Here it is. You don't have to produce. You don't have to put up the money. We've already done the work for you. And here's a high quality thing. So we feel really good about it. We're getting some well, we've been talking to showrunners. So that, you know, that's where that is. And then... Um, we we are in post production on Beer League the series. Um, we brought <laughs> we we, uh, we brought back uh, a bunch of the characters from the original movie, like uh, Anthony DeSando, obviously Jimmy Palumbo, um, right. and uh, and uh, uh, Michael Deej. Um, so we brought some of the original cast. We added some new cast. It's, it takes place 16 years after the original movie. Uh, to kind of see where these guys are and what they're doing and introducing it's the old timers league now. Yeah, and introducing <laughs> introducing new characters, you know, you know, G, you know, G, you know, Jimmy's son, a girlfriend, and you know, they kind of see where they are sixteen years later. So, we're in post production on that. We're actually it's the first cut's been done, and I'm actually emailing a, our audio guy to, to finish finish audio for us this week. So it's coming along nicely. So that's those are the main three things that we have on our plate right now. Awesome, man. I, now, yeah, I remember when I met you, Tom, at uh the reading mark for um. Uh, what's his name's movie? Um, oh, the 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 beach one, the beached, beached, beached. Yeah, yeah. and we were yeah. talking about you know all of the the uh 
the the poker show and all and how you know so i'm really glad to see you got a lot going on man yeah it's yeah. it's coming along nicely man it's yeah. uh it, it's because it, i remember it, you told me you'd put me in it if you sold it just uh, you know, i would of course that, that's nowhere that's documented nowhere <laughs> I think I had a camera on us when you said it. I, I might have footage. Richie, up. Richie, I, you know what? You could say I'm so gullible. I'll go, yeah, okay, sure. All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fun. No, you know, man, that's great. I'm happy for you, man. That's great. You're working hard. That's for sure. You know, grinding. and we're grinding. And, we're you know, grinding. It, it is an interesting time in that there, like Mark said, there are no rules, but because there are no rules, you, you're kind of making your own production shit up on the fly here and a lot of yeah. times it's probably the wrong thing to do if i tell the wrong joke then i can move on from that joke and keep going but if you if you're trying to come up with your own concept and you're going the wrong way that could be a complete like it could take a longer time for you and that's got to be the tough part am i going in the right direction you know it's um it's definitely a challenge right so um, I'll, I'll tell you, and you know what, this is a, we're, this is a, this is a free and free space. This is a, this is a safe space, Tom. You can say what you want. Yes. We, we actually have an episode in checked out that just that, that instant thing absolutely happened. We had an episode where it's not part of season one and we felt, you know what, the joke didn't land. It didn't work. I don't know if it's going to work, you know? Um, and if we put it out there, it could have killed us. Not in a bad way, like we said anything wrong, but it just, it wasn't funny enough, right? Or it didn't work. It just fell flat. And, you know, Mark and yeah. I talked about it. We said, you know what? Let's just On can't. paper, it worked. And then when in, in action, it was like, yeah, this just doesn't land. It's not. Yeah. It's so not it's, up to par with everything else. That yeah, it's, we it's a constant it's it's a constant thing, right, Mark? Like we're always talking about what works, what doesn't work. And, you know, you you take risks. I think that you look, everybody, everybody wants to be a filmmaker. Everybody wants to tell a story, right? But you have to be sure that the story is compelling enough, right? That people want to hear it, that people want to watch it. And quite frankly, with that episode, I think, Mark, I think we realized, I don't think people want to watch this, right? It's not, yeah. it just doesn't work, right? So you yeah. have to, you have to have that, you have to have that, hum, hum, you know, have to be really humble, right? Yeah. Uh, and be like, okay, this sucks. I can't put this out there, you know, and not instead of, now you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to put it out there, and I want everybody to see it. Not everybody wants to see it, you know. <laughs> like you gotta, yeah. you have to be self aware, you know, in a, in a sense. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think a lot of independent filmmakers who also put the hello puppy, who also put themselves speaking of independent filmmakers, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I think independent filmmakers who also put themselves. Um, <laughs> In the films where they're the star or they're like the co-star, I mean, it makes me it makes me cringe because I go, "What are you doing? Like, yeah. you, like, you got to know one your job well." Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah, like the one thing I didn't like about Checked Out was all those times that Mark's dog just popped into the scene for no reason. There he comes again. <laughs> oh, he's so See, cute. How professional are we as a podcast? I mean, we love it. You, you, dogs pop up. Children yell and scream. You just never know what where, where we're hey, going. Hey, there was a child honest, that screamed. Always my Not today, house. but we've had that. Yeah, we've had that. It's always my house oh. that the kids yelling or the dogs <laughs> showing up. It's always my camera. It's never. He just oh. he gets jealous. When Look I'm, at how cute I'm he is. The He's dog's so not bad either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tom, how'd you get involved in all this? Um, well, I went to Wagner College, my man. I was yeah, a theater major. I was, you were I was a theater a major. Theater major. What year? What year did you graduate? Oh, really? You're gonna you're making you're gonna make me disclose that. Ninety eight. Well, you don't ha have ninety. You don't have to. Ninety eight. No, no, ninety eight. Ninety eight. I'm forty eight years old. I'm forty eight. Okay, think 40 if Wait, hold on. Am I gonna be forty nine this year? Oh fuck! I'm not depressed. No. Um. <laughs> so yeah, ninety eight. I I have to really think about how old I am. And it's not because of that actor thing where it's like, I don't want anyone to know how old do you want me to be in this you know, in this production. I legitimately have to do the math because it's like, <laughs> what is it, 24 when you're allowed to start renting cars? It's After, something like that. Who's counting? Who's counting? What do you need yeah. to, like, there's nothing to count for anymore. Where's he going uh, with this? 
And I just got lost here somewhere. Well, he's old. He's senile. Why does he need a car? He has to rent a car. Oh, you guys are too funny. You hey, guys are too fucking funny. Hey, hey Richie, put on your <laughs> put on your shaded fucking glasses and play a piano <laughs> song. <laughs> so you, but but at Wagner, you were a theater major. Like I what was, got I was, I did, I did musical theater. I did the whole singing, dancing thing, and then what? I went to Mike. So did I. I went, that's funny. Went to Mike Nichols Acting School for my wow. masters in acting, and then I. That's when I realized that I sucked. What as an was actor. that like? Uh, I realized I sucked as an actor. I wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> I was bad. Do you know? No, what I, no. Do you know Rachel Nichols from ESPN? I think the the. Do you know that's Mike Nichols' daughter-in-law? I never Is knew it that. Really? I happened to read that the other day. She's married to Mike Nichols' son. Oh, that's so crazy. You know who I'm talking about? I Tony. I no, I meant Tony. Tony. I know you do. Oh, Mark, Rachel Nichols. Mark, where's he going with <laughs> She rented a car, Rachel Nichols. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was 24. So <laughs> let, me do, let me do my impression of Richie during a uh, interview. Uh, yeah, he's Squirrel. Pissed. He's pissed now. He's, <laughs> he's he's pissed. This is this is Rick Adana all pissed off at me now. This is this we, is as mad as I get. <laughs> <laughs> you better look out. You better watch out if you wow. have, if you Man, have a has, bunch of balloons, I will pop. He one. hasn't scolded me like this in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so so you went at, you realized you weren't a good actor. And yeah. and you decided I'm going to get so I started camera. I started working at the uh, the visiting nurse association. I was doing overnight security, right? right. Uh, 180 pound security guard. Yeah, that really works. <laughs> um uh and I wrote my first play and uh I raised money through friends and family. I put it up at the uh producers club there in the, in yeah. the city. Sure. Uh, wow. It was in 90 nice. 99 2000. That was and back was when you were able to rent theaters for normal prices. Yeah. Right? And actually right. take risks. Now you, you better remember have David Hasselhoff starring in it. And you better yeah. have. <laughs> do you guys David. remember the Producers Club had two theaters? Do you guys remember that? Yes, yeah. I do. So they, but I'm old. So they had the one that's still there now, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the real thin, and then they had the other one on the round around the corner on they did on Eighth Avenue. It was on the second floor, and it was actually yeah. a nice space. Yeah, I, mean, I saw a few things there. It was a nice little place. It was a nice space, you know, and uh, we we put our two of our we put two shows there, ninety nine and like two thousand, two thousand one, and that's when I fell in love with like doing production and stuff like that. But I needed to get a fucking job, so I um, I started working on Wall Street. So I've been I've been working in finance oh. on like a, for about oh my god now it's got to be 25, 25 some odd years. Um, but I always just stayed involved. So I, I, I wrote plays and, you know, raised money. And my first, the first show that I movie that I did was called two sides of love. It was a short film and I did it as a play. We, we rented out a bunch of theaters in Jersey, right. In, uh, like, uh, any, like the community theaters when they were black, what we did was we went from different theater to different theater when they had like, they had their black dates. And I was like, all right, I'm going to take your theater during that time. And I'm coming to put my show on. And it led to our first DP, Jeff Sesselberg. He was a stage manager at one of the theaters. Came up to me and he goes, have you ever thought about making this into a film? And I was like, and Mark, you know Jeff. Yeah, um, I love him. And he came up to me and he was like, we can make a movie into this. And I was like, all right, let's do this, you know? And all of a sudden you just start doing your budget. You go, holy shit, this is going to cost a lot of fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do this. And then it was like, mm. let's do a short film. And that was it. So, and then from there, we just, I fell in love, created 624. That was back in, hang on, I, I have to date myself. Hold on, I got to look at my calendars here because I got pictures of everything. <laughs> was in with, with your backdrop, it looks yeah. like you're just looking at 624. Really. That was really weird. What you uh, not here, I'll show you. So we, I, oh shit, I just killed my camera. So, come on, you asshole. When is your you dog going to pop in? Up, don't worry, man. So like at my office, so I've got like all the different movies we've done and all like here's the checked out stuff, pictures from backstage. Nice. Wow. So yeah. So that was like my first film, and then you know, I just fell in love with it, man. But you know what? What makes it so much easier and better is uh, is people working with guys like you, honestly. And I know that sounds. I know that people are gonna watch and go, "Oh, he's so full of shit," blah blah blah. But no, it's it's true, man. 
Working with I, guys like Rick Adana, with you, Richie, with Briscoe, with with Roach. Well, um, not Briscoe. Atow, but you know. um, not Briscoe. <laughs> Briscoe's great because he's the only honest one. He's like, I don't want to be in it. <laughs> I'll write yeah, it. Yeah. I'll write. He, yeah. He wrote, remember, like, I remember when, when Bris, Briscoe wrote the, the part I did. Yeah. Yes. And and I was saying to you, well, why don't you just get Briscoe to do it? And you're like, he doesn't want to. He just doesn't want to be an actor at all. Act. And I'm like, dude, you're like the only person in the world who's not trying to get in front of the camera. Yeah. He's yeah, like, it's no, true. Just, let me write. just let me write it. I don't want to be on. We got to get him on season two, Mark. We got to get him in. He said he'll only play one character, and that's a heavy set cop with a clipboard who says, Captain wants to see you. <laughs> that's all he wants. And I was like, that's the great. Like, that's right. He great told me team. that. He's He's been trying to get on one of the shows, like Law and Orders or something for years, just to do that and be done with it. <laughs> How great would it be, though, if he got really popular, like as a comic? And then he was just in like a million TV shows and movies doing the same line. <laughs> Captain wants to see you. Captain, Captain wants to see you. <laughs> it's starring Tom Briscoe. Captain wants to see you. <laughs> this week on Law and Order. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Is it did he so I know I'm gonna stay sick. Did he actually do a role like that ever? No. No. That would be great. But he's just great. obsessed with it. Well, there's gotta be a way to put this into the next season. That's what I'm. That's, you know, I'm thinking maybe a cop comes into the bodega, does his thing, and then at the last minute, some guy walks in and goes, "Captain wants to see you." That's the guy. That's, that's, that's it. <laughs> that would so, be awesome. What are you guys working on, Richie? What are you working on these days? What's going on? Um, with you? you know, actually, I actually something I'm gonna have to send to you eventually. Uh, I'm writing a, a musical with a friend of mine, and uh, it's we finally it. It's been on me to write the script, and I finally did. I, a, friend, a couple of buddies of mine called me a few years ago and said, "Hey, we have this idea for a musical, uh, and one, and it's based on a true story uh, about um, back in tw in uh, 1919. There was a scandal in Newport, Rhode Island, at their uh, naval base, and uh, apparently there was like a whole homosexual underground there. And I am not making this up. They recruited in a Richie secret to group. write it they <laughs> recruited Richie to write it but they recruited uh like 30 or 40 young good-looking sailors to go in and infiltrate and have sex and then report it back and it turned into they took they 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 went after these guys in court they were court-martialed and it turned out that it went all the way up to the head of the the naval uh U United States Navy who at the time was some guy named Franklin Delano Roosevelt yeah and he wow. he was running. It, it got so out of control that they actually just think of a coincidence that there was also a president named that a few years <laughs> later. Yeah, it's not the same guy. And um, <laughs> and it got all. It eventually was swept under the rug, and no one knows about this scandal. And my friend happened to see it and decided, "Hey, this would make a great musical." So <laughs> that's what we're doing. I, and I'm very proud of it, Tom. The music's great. And awesome. I just who's, pretty, who's writing the music? My friend who's Steve composing? Baranski is writing the music. Uh, the, the I'm writing the lyrics, and uh, and I wrote the story. And uh, I can when, I can literally say Doug Wilson and I came to see it, and Doug would love more than anything to have shit on it. Yeah, and the shit on Richie, and just, he was right. like, and he was looking at me at, while we were watching. He was like. This is amazing. This is fantastic. The music's fantastic. And it was funny because they only had like, but he had another partner at first and now it, it's just me. And he, when he sent me the first four or five songs, I'm like, all right, yeah, send it to me. Let me hear it. And I was like, oh my God, this is good. But they, they didn't have a story. They didn't have anything. So I, uh, I put a story together and I'm, I'm, we're hoping to get some backing for it. And we're going to start doing some showcases. I'll let you know all about it, Tom. I'd love you to come. I'd love to get your feedback on it. Yeah, no, I'd love to. I'd love to see it. Love to hear it. And yeah, yeah it's awesome, man. I'm yeah, proud. you know, it's it's um, you know, musicals are it's there. There are it's the live theater is it is. There needs to be more live theater. Yes, right. You know, and it it's just you know it's it's sort of 
it's very difficult. You think you think making TV shows or movies is difficult, you know. You independent people, filmmakers out there, try to try to do an independent live on stage and getting a theater, and it's crazy, right? The cost, yeah, is yeah. Just insane. So, and I, so it's my favorite. I'm, I've been in a lot of different aspects of the show business, you know, yeah. as far as, and I have to say, live theater is still my favorite by far. It's just I don't know why, but it just it juices me, it turns me on, it gets me going, you know, I. And I, I got so busy with comedy that I kind of lost my way with theater for a while, for a long time. And Mark will tell you, I'm taking this acting class in the city, and I, it's all I talk about. Like Mark, yeah. Mark knows. Like it's, Mark's like, I haven't seen you this excited. So that's really, I'm I'm still going to do comedy. I'm always going to be a comedian. Right, but yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to getting more back into the acting and, and the singing and everything, you know? So yeah, I get it. Uh, dude, I, I, an acting teacher told me this back in the day and I, I i still like think about it all the time he goes a really great movie will entertain you but a really great piece of theater will change your life mm -hmm. right right and i believe it like i i love movies i love movies i love tv like i i can't get enough i just restarted watching west wing that's how like that's a commitment great show great show. you know i I worked at TKTS in the eighties with him. With, uh, with Sorkin. Yeah, with Aaron Sorkin. Dude, oh, yeah, I just really. the we were runners at TKTS play. together. And he was always talking about this play he was right writing, and it was a few good men. That's great, great. dude, and you know what made me go back to watch the West Wing? I watched Newsroom. I rewatched How was it. Oh, yeah. Did you like it? If you well, I loved when it came out. I was addicted. Where every week I was like, "Okay, what time is it? What is, uh, when's the next one?" Yeah. I just rewatched it and was like, "Holy shit!" Sorkin, uh, pretty much. Uh, that's the dog licking the uh, camera. Um, Sorkin, pretty sure much. Sure, it is. Uh, he um, <laughs> Sorkin uh, <laughs> predicted the future, like. Everything he, they talk about in newsroom happened like it was like, holy shit! Like this guy's like over the top brilliant. Uh, yeah, he can't predict the future. I, I wish he was here to tell me the dog was going to lick the camera before it happened. <laughs> now Sorkin is uh, he's um, <clears throat> he's a uh, he's a great writer. The dog, Sorkin. Great, yes. great creator. Yeah, West Wing's one of my favorites too, Mark. Um, one of my all-time favorite TV shows, that NYPD Blue. Th those are my inspirations. Yeah, I loved NYPD Blue, man. It was so Such great. Such a great show. Yeah. Um, look at this puppy. The dog is it. yawning, Mark. The dog. <laughs> he He's knew we obviously the... watching the show. <laughs> we hit the we hit the time mark. You know, yeah, I think this is the dog's way of telling us to wrap it up. He's yeah. he's All actually right. our stage manager. Uh, <laughs> he replaced Tony. <laughs> I love it. All right. So All right, guys, you hit your time. <laughs> Come on, wrap it up. I know. Mark, that doesn't look good at all. Wrap it up. <laughs> you know what's funny about this? Some people will watch this and think, my God, how unprofessional they are. And other people watch it and go, this is the most original thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the dog gets jealous when I'm podcasting or I have meetings on Zoom. Well, I get jealous when you're with the dog. So <laughs> wait till Richie, you can you lick your own balls. <laughs> oh, I can lick my own balls. Then what are you doing on here? I'm that old. I'm that old. I'm that old now. They've fallen that far down, top. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's time to go. I think we can wrap on that one. Uh, Richie, do you have a joke you want to take us out on? Shit, I forgot about a joke. Do you? Um, um <laughs> I got I just heard a really funny one. It was a I rabbi what? was telling it at a thing. He goes, uh a, a rabbi, a priest, and a politician, or a rabbi, a Hindu, and a politician are are walking through the woods and it starts to get late and they realize they need shelter. So they go to the farmer's house. They knock on the farmer's door. The farmer answers. They go, listen, we need a place to stay for the night. And he goes, okay, but here's the thing. I only have two beds. One of you have to sleep in the barn. 
So the Hindu goes, well, I'll sleep in the barn. And he goes, okay. So the Hindu goes out to the barn. Uh, the politician and the rabbi go into the bedroom and they're sleeping. All of a sudden there's a knock on the door. The Hindu is at the door and he goes, listen, there's a cow in the barn. I can't sleep in there. Uh, uh, the holy sacred cow is in the barn. I can't, I can't sleep there. So the, the, the rabbi goes, fine, I'll go out. You take the bed. I'll go out to the barn. He goes out to the barn. They fall asleep. All of a sudden, there's a knock at the door. The rabbi is at the door, and he goes, listen, there's a there's a pig out there, and I can't sleep with a pig. It's you know, the kosher. I can't do it. So the politician goes, fine, I'll sleep out in the barn. He goes out to the barn. They fall asleep. There's a knock at the door. They open the door. There's a pig and a cow going, uh. <laughs> <laughs> not our oh, best. Oh, that's good. What that's a good, a good one. one. I had I had a joke, but you're gonna have to tell it. I have to tell it to you guys off air because I don't know if I, I think I'd get in trouble for it if I told it. So, well, tell it. We could <laughs> cut it out. You really can't. You can't put this out there though. If I tell you guys this joke, Tony, hit end. <laughs> that's um, jokes and storytelling. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> Shit. You took them off? <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Fuck. All right. Hang on. Can we get them back? I'm trying. I'm trying. Shit. He hit the wrong button. Because I had to talk to them. <laughs>